From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian at the State Capitol. A Montana Legislative Select Committee investigating the state's judiciary system is adopting new rules on testimony, and those might also apply to a new committee looking into an election issue in Butte. The Obama's headline an energetic night two of the Democratic National Convention. I'm Caroline Cummings in Chicago with the other big names that took the stage and how Vice President Harris left her mark while miles away on the campaign trail. Weddings, funerals, family reunions. I'm going to introduce you to the rebirth of a place that is important to the folks in the small town of Opportunity. Alrighty, it is 601 on this Wednesday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Owell will and I can already tell you, I see a difference in the old high cam. You do? Lots of oh, cars yeah. parked right there. I didn't even notice that. Uh, good eye. I didn't either until gotta I... Gotta get in there early, early, people. You gotta get that good parking spot yeah. to get to your 8 a.m. on time, well, people. They just, uh, they just paved that parking lot uh, oh, really? over the last few oh, weeks. So Pretty slick. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> new digs as we're heading into football season. <laughs> so. That's what I like to see. Good tailgating That's pavement is right. what I'm looking at. Uh, 40s for most of us this morning. A little cooler out toward West Yellowstone. 36 right now Ooh. and we're probably going to see at least an isolated chance of some showers and thunderstorms you get into the afternoon it probably won't be widespread but it'll be more than what we're seeing right there um, the models definitely differing uh, on what is going to happen I do expect to see at least some scattered showers and thunderstorms firing their way back through the area for the day today mainly looking at quiet conditions to start the day maybe a little rumble of thunder or two later Later in the day. I'll talk more about your hour by hour forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Now, as Republicans on a special state legislative committee continue hearings on the judicial branch, they have adopted new rules, including one to issue more subpoenas to state officials and employees. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian explains. Senate President Jason Ellsworth says that an existing select committee investigating the state's judiciary and a newly created one looking into an election issue in Butte need to finish their work in a timely manner and that new policies will help them do that. It's the citizens' money. We don't need to be spending more of their money being here. So we need to run efficiently. And what this will allow us to do is continue to run efficiently. On Tuesday, the Senate Select Committee on Judicial Oversight and Reform adopted two proposals from Ellsworth. One says the committee will issue subpoenas to elected officials and those working under them when asking them to testify. The other says those testifying will be asked to sign a document saying they'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as in a courtroom. Ellsworth also announced this weekend that he was convening a select committee to investigate what led to this week's recount in Butte, Silverbow County, where the clerk says about 1,000 votes may have been counted twice. He said he expects that committee may follow this one in adopting these policies. You know, we need complete answers from people, and I think this will help facilitate us to get there. It, it's certainly not meant to be adversarial. Ellsworth created the Judiciary Select Committee after a series of court rulings that Republican legislative leaders said overstepped their authority. Democrats have been refusing to participate, saying it was a political stunt and part of a pattern of attacks on the judicial branch. Democratic leaders did appoint two Butte lawmakers to serve on the election committee. Senate Minority Leader Pat Flowers told MTN he thought these proposed policies were unnecessary. Ellsworth declined to give specific timelines on when these committees might come out with their reports. He said that will happen when their work gets done. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And tonight, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will formally accept the nomination for vice president at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Former President Bill Clinton is also set to take the stage as day three focuses in on reproductive and other rights under the theme of Fight for Freedoms. Day two of the convention featured star power and fiery speeches from the Obamas. This time, Vice President Kamala Harris addressed the audience by video from the campaign trail. CBS News' Caroline Cummings has more from Chicago. Yes, she can. Former President Barack Obama closed out night two of the Democratic National Convention to roaring applause, making his case for Vice President Kamala Harris over former President Donald Trump this November. We do not need four more years of bluster and bumbling and chaos. America's ready for a better story. We are ready for a president, Kamala Harris. 
Former First Lady Michelle Obama took the stage before him. She delivered a few zingers when criticizing the former president. Who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? Earlier, second gentleman Doug Emhoff shared his decade-plus love story with Harris. This Thursday will be our 10th wedding anniversary. That same night, I'll be hearing my wife, Kamala Harris, accept your nomination for President of the United States. Harris and her running mate, Governor Tim Walls, were more than 90 miles away campaigning in Milwaukee last night, but Harris briefly addressed the convention by live stream. Together, we will chart a new way forward. Her campaign said more than 15,000 people were at the Wisconsin rally held in the same venue as the Republican National Convention last month. A hell of a lot can change in four weeks. Day two also featured an energetic, star-studded ceremonial roll call vote to give Harris her party's nomination. DNC! With a surprise performance from hip-hop artist Lil Jon. Caroline Cummings, CBS News, Chicago. President John F. Kennedy's grandson and a handful of Republicans also took the stage last night at the convention, including former Trump White House Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham, who said Vice President Harris has her vote. Former President Trump and Senator J.D. Vance will rally together later today in North Carolina. Now back a little bit closer to home, Butte Silverbow completed its recount of the June primary election Tuesday afternoon and confirmed they had overcounted the number of ballots. The recount did not result in significant changes in the local primary races. The final count determined that there were 10,934 ballots cast in the election. The first count showed 12,077 ballots cast, an overcount of approximately 1,000 ballots. And the Montana Land Board, in partnership with the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks, has purchased more than 50,000 acres of habitat conservation leases, or HCLs. These HCLs increase public access, keep agricultural land in production, and conserve, conserve prairie habitats. Eight private properties compromise these 50,000 acres, and private landowners voluntarily commit to retaining wildlife habitat for 30 or 40 year terms. These habitats are conserved while continuing tradition of agriculture activities such as livestock grazing. The value of these properties is over $6 million. Six of the properties will be completely funded by Habitat Montana and two will be split between Habitat Montana and FWP's Migratory Bird Wetland Program. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks Administrators 51 leases, which, over, which total over 330,000 acres. And a community center in Opportunity is reopening on its 100th birthday. MTN's John Amy tells us why this building is so important to the people of this small community near Anaconda. Going back a century, the Opportunity Community Club was literally the heart of this small community. So it broke a lot of hearts when this building fell into disrepair a few years ago. But folks here banded together and rebuilt it better than ever. And many people can't wait to get back in here and try out the dance floor again. That's the best dance floor I've ever been on because it gives while you swing and sway. And we, if it could talk, it could tell you some good stories. In 1924, the Anaconda Company provided the raw materials and the people living in Opportunity, about six miles east of Anaconda, built the community center themselves. For decades, the center was used for dances, wedding receptions, family reunions, and other community events. And I remember this place as being close to the heart of my mother, my father, and our entire family. The building stopped being used about seven years ago and quickly fell into disrepair. The roof was about to cave in and the center was likely going to be demolished. About two years ago, residents and Opportunity came together to raise money and begin repairing the building. The um, older folks in the community come in and every one of them has a story about a dance, about meeting spouses here. Uh, yeah, it's just, everybody's got a story. If it wasn't for this building, we all probably would not be here because this is where my mom and dad met <laughs> at a dance. 
Through donations and grants, the crew raised about $160,000 to restore the building and will soon open its grand opening on its 100th anniversary. It took plenty of work to complete. It doesn't feel like work at all. It feels like all of us together for a project that's going to benefit our future and our memories are going to be here forever. In Opportunity, John Amy. MTN News. Lots of stories I'm sure could be told I, on that I dance floor. I think that floor. is a really cool story. I do too. Yeah, getting, uh, getting a new life. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. It's good. Now, before we head into a break, wanted to share this with you. We have featured Maria Brañas a couple of times on okay. Montana this morning. She's considered the world's oldest person at 107. Uh, 117 years old. Well, get out of here. It's a, and I mean, look at her. She looked she looks amazing. Great. Absolutely amazing. Now, we do have some sad news to report. Yesterday, her family said that she passed peacefully in her sleep yesterday. Oh, now, but 117, she lived a <laughs> long life and saw a lot of things. Well, and she just looked amazing for 117 years old. That's amazing. Absolutely incredible. 1907 in March, she was born in San Francisco. Francisco. Then she and her family returned to Spain when she was very, very young, um, but died peacefully in her sleep yesterday. Next oldest living person listed in this little research group that goes to uh, a gentleman over in Japan who is 116 oh, years wow. old. So pretty incredible life. That really is awesome. That that woman led. Now we're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning. When we come back, Matt's going to have a look at your forecast. We're going to have some of your top stories and we have a, an attorney calling for stiffer punishments and better ethics policies considering a massive sexual assault case centered around a Western Montana doctor. We have that story and much more when we come back.